Hello and welcome to this video in which I address common questions and misconceptions about missing data in empirical quantitative research. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. On Tuesdays I usually show an analysis in the M software and on Thursdays I discuss more general issues in multivariate statistical analysis including structural equation modeling, factor analysis, latent class analysis and multi-level analysis. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources including a link to my free weekly statistics newsletter as well as courses that I offer through Quantfish. So in this video I want to address some very frequently asked questions about missing data. Missing data is something that almost all quantitative researchers have to deal with. For example, when you assess questionnaires, there will be questions that some respondents will not provide answers to. When you run a longitudinal study or repeated measure study, then some individuals may not return to subsequent assessments, so they might drop out of the study over time. And then the question arises, what do you do with missing data? Some people will just simply automatically delete cases where you have missing data and say, I will just focus on complete cases and then um, this is more valid because then I'm only using the people who really provide data. However, as I will show in this video here, this is actually in fact highly problematic and it's much more problematic than including cases with missing scores in your analysis. So let's first of all talk about why missing data pose a problem. So what is the problem when you have, when some of the individuals are missing some of the scores? And so the most basic and most intuitive issue that arises from missing data is that your sample size gets reduced and the information that you have to estimate statistical parameters or estimate um, p-values, tests of significance, confidence intervals from the data, the information is reduced because you don't have as many cases, so to say, or information from as many cases when there is missing data. And so as a result, this then affects your statistical power to find significance. So say you uh, have less, you have fewer cases than you plan to have. Um, and then that's a reduction in the sample size and it leads to reduced statistical power. So one consequence can be that you don't have as much statistical power. Now this is relatively benign because power alone, so to say, doesn't mean you have bias in your uh, estimates of statistical parameters such as regression coefficients or mean differences or something like that. However, that can also be a consequence of missing data is that you could introduce bias in your statistical analysis. And so for example, imagine that you assess that you want to estimate the prevalence of depression in the general population. So you give people, you select a sample, you give people a depression questionnaire, you send it to them at home and you wait for it to come back and then those individuals who are most depressed, they don't um, get out of bed, so to say, and they don't send you the questionnaire back. So then obviously that will introduce bias in your estimation of the proportion of individuals in the population who suffer from depression because the most depressed indiv individuals or some of the most depressed individuals just simply because of their depression were not able to fill out this questionnaire, put it in an envelope and send it back to you. And so then obviously then you have a biased estimate and not just a loss of statistical power, but your bias in your estimate of the prevalence of depression. So that's also something that can happen due to missing data and that's obviously that's more severe than having reduced power because reduced power could be addressed by collecting a larger sample to begin with. However, the bias that arises from, uh, from the problem that the, p the very people whose construct you're interested in do not respond, that is something that is more problematic. So those are so say, the key issues with missing data. Now, what happens when you do when you do what a lot of people do and you throw away all cases that have missing data or some miss, some missing scores, 
then obviously what happens is you're making a more restrictive assumption about what's actually happening so say what the missing data mechanism is and that's the key thing so say to consider first is many people think about simply about okay what should i do with missing data is there a general rule is there a cutoff so say as to how many missing scores per person are admissible or are allowed and uh, something like that but that's actually the wrong way to think about missing data so say the right way to think about it is why are the scores missing so is this a benign mechanism by which the missing scores are missing or not and then what can we do about it and so the first step should be to study missing data patterns so look at what patterns of dropout or patterns of missing scores you have which items did not get um, answers or have a reduced number of item of responses why could that be the case why do you have a certain pattern of dropout over time and then study what the missingness is correlated with in your data set for example are those particularly uh, or people with particular characteristics for example old people do old people not respond or what could be other reasons so to say that people did not um, get back to you do you have variables measured at the first measurement occasion for example that predict dropout over time for example if you have measured depression in a longitudinal study at the first measurement occasion then you can use that to predict or to to um, try to predict uh, drop out over time and then that's information that you have in your data set so learning about the missing data mechanism is important and oftentimes actually missing scores may be benign or the mechanism by which scores are missing may be benign there are many reasons why missing scores could be missing completely at random missing completely at random or MCAR is the most benign missing data mechanism when it has nothing to do with what you're studying neither independent nor dependent variables so for example when people simply move away so in a longitudinal study some people will just simply move to another state they will no longer be available to participate in your study and that could be completely benign because the reasons for which they moved may have nothing to do with your study or people may have gotten sick um, on the day of the assessment and they can't come simply because they got a cold and so then if that is unrelated to what you're studying then also that's missing completely at random it is a completely benign scenario another relatively benign scenario is so-called missing at random data not missing completely at random but missing at random or mar m a r that's a scenario where the where you have the information about why people dropped out and one example i already gave so for example when people drop out of a study because they are depressed so in a longitudinal study they are no longer present at later time points but you have their initial depression scores so then you can um, predict drop out and so then you have information about why people are dropping out you have that knowledge based on so-called auxiliary variables sometimes age predicts drop out or other variables and so it is a good idea to include a lot of variables in your study to begin with that may later on be missing data auxiliary variables or missing data covariates where they can predict dropout if you have those variables then you are in a position or at least in a better position to establish the benign missing at random mechanism so then even when the data are not missing completely at random but they are missing at random meaning they are related to variables that you have in your data set then you can use techniques for addressing missing data that are much better than using something like listwise deletion listwise deletion where you delete all cases that have one or more missing scores make or imply the restrictive the most restrictive assumption of missing completely at random data which may not hold whereas other techniques that um, retain more statistical power are based on um, less restrictive assumptions so missing at random data
for example, when you use multiple imputation to deal with missing scores, multiple imputation allows you to retain more statistical power because you're not throwing as much information away. You're retaining cases with missing data and you impute their scores. And that technique of multiple imputation does not require the data to be missing completely at random. It only requires the data to be missing at random, which means that as long as you have the information in your data set about which or why cases dropped out, then you can use multiple imputation. And this is a better technique, a more powerful technique than listwise deletion. Likewise, you can also for many statistical um, approaches like regression, AT test, analysis of variance, structural equation modeling, path analysis, confirmatory factor analysis, use what is called full information maximum likelihood estimation. Full information maximum likelihood estimation does not require imputation of scores. So it's much easier to apply. All you do is you simply include cases with partial data in the analysis. You include so-called auxiliary variables, if possible, so meaning variables that are correlated to missingness, correlated to dropout in your analysis. And then the parameters will be estimated, including all, including information from all cases, even those that only contribute partial data and that's a very straightforward way to address address missing data that does not require you to um, delete cases that uh, can make makes use of all the available data that you have and it's implemented in many programs for structural equation modeling such as for example M plus Lavan Amos and so many statistical analyses you can run in those programs even basic statistical analyses such as regression, t-test, ANOVA, including missing data. So it is nowadays not difficult to handle missing data. A lot of people are scared because they think that they are cheating if they, if they include missing scores, but that's actually wrong. You are cheating more, in fact, when you delete cases. So that has a bigger potential for introducing bias into your analysis than does the application of techniques such as multiple imputation or full information maximum likelihood estimation because they are based on um, less restricted assumptions. They're more realistic, so to say, than listwise deletion. Listwise deletion makes a pretty unrealistic, pretty strong assumption that the cases are all all the missing data points are missing completely at random and that's less realistic than thinking well some might be missing completely at random but some are not missing completely at random but they're related to some other variables in the data set so in summary a good first step is to uh, look at missing data patterns and see okay what where do we have missing data are there any systematic patterns and then also create missing data indicators that tell you uh, or that reflect to so say how many scores are missing per individual and try to correlate that missing data indicator with other variables in your data set for example age um, gender maybe socioeconomic status other substantive variables in the data set to see if those are related to missingness and then if you find variables that are related to drop out that are related to missing scores then include them in your analysis as auxiliary variables some programs such as for example m plus make it very easy for you to include auxiliary variables you it's one line of code where you just simply say those are the variables that are related to missingness please include them in my analysis and there's nothing else that you have to do i have a video on this channel in which i show this in m plus how easy it is to include missing data auxiliary variables and so this would be then something that you could do to make your missing data uh, analysis stronger or your analysis with missing data and it's not a lot of effort. Another option is multiple imputation which is now implemented in many programs such as for example SPSS, M plus, R, other programs offer um, op options for using missing data um, productively so say or including missing data so that you can reduce um, reduce bias and make sure that you retain as much statistical power as possible. Also, what is a good idea is when you plan your study to already include variables that later on 
might be related to drop out especially when you plan a longitudinal study you could even ask people at the first measurement occasion how likely is it that you will come back to the study and then you can let people rate it and that's often something that helps you later on because if people are already saying at the beginning well it's not so likely that i'll do this again then you have an auxiliary variable right there that you can later on include in your study so in summary don't follow so say old school rules of thumb about cutoff values for missing data those are all nonsensical there is no cutoff value there is no it's not about so say how much missing data you have it's about what the mechanism is that's the important part and then try to find out what the mechanism is use modern methods for addressing missing data such as multiple imputation or full information maximum likelihood estimation and then you are better off than when you use methods like listwise deletion or something like that also what is also highly problematic are um, single imputation methods so for example putting in the mean that's something that people sometimes do is they, they do mean replacement of missing scores they use some sort of average from the sample um, to replace scores with missing is and that's highly problematic because it causes bias and so that's not something that you should do so you should use modern methods for handling missing data multiple imputation full information maximum likelihood like i said those are now widely accepted there are so many papers out there that you can refer to and books where you can say this is the state of the art see for example craig enders um, book on applied missing data analysis or see shaffer and graham you can find some references below in the description and so you can refer to those and there's really not um th there's not a, a reasonable reason to disagree with that that's now so say an established fact so use those me modern methods and don't be scared of missing data don't throw your data away because that is the worst option that you have i hope you liked this video to learn more about missing data handling if you did then please hit the like button please subscribe to this channel and don't forget to check out the description for additional resources including courses that i teach through quantfish and i'll see you next time